talking about the Statue of Liberty Museum. It's a brand new institution on, on the island. Uh, fantastic job and a gold award winner in our building team awards this year. With me are um, Nick Garrison, FAIA, from FX Collaborative, the uh, uh, chief design architect on the project, Doug Phelps from Phelps Construction, the uh, general contractor, and Steve Briganti, uh, the president and CEO of the uh, Statue of Liberty Ellis Island Foundation, known as Solief, uh, who was the owner. And uh, Steve, uh, tell us, you, know, you, you, you have this situation where you've got 9-11 happening. Uh, you can't even let more than 20% of the people into the old museum, which was in the pedestal, really terrible. Uh, you need to raise $80, $100 million in contributions to get this thing going. You've got the Park Service and a UNESCO heritage site to deal with. Uh, wow, uh, what, what were you trying, what were your main goals to achieve with this project? That came because of 9-11, as you suggested. And uh, most of the visitors to the Liberty Island couldn't get into the statue where we had built a museum. So our board and the National Park Service, uh, with whom we have a partnership, decided that we should build a freestanding museum on Liberty Island. Uh, so that was the goal, really, to expand the visitor's experience or to enhance the visitor's experience and provide a broader experience for those people that couldn't get inside the statue itself. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's talk about how that, uh, how that came about and what, what uh, you know, let's, let's move from 2012 when I think when that started to uh, closer to where we are. Uh, Nick, uh, tell us what, uh, what kinds of uh, uh, considerations were made in terms of the design and construction of the project that, uh, fulfilled some of the things that Stephen and the foundation wanted to achieve. Yeah, well, aside from the, uh, the kind of logistical and uh, technical issues, I think the main thing for the design team was to pick, uh, make a project where people would have the opposite reaction of frustration, which was the, the reaction that they had when they went to the island previous. So we just set out to make a place that was joyous and accessible to everyone that would have multiple levels of experience so that uh, regardless of where you came from and what language you spoke, you would have a, a great time at this museum and you'd learn something. Mm -hmm. So with that, um, we spent a great deal of time just looking at the small size of that island and realized that the museum is gonna take up some percentage of it. And we came up with this idea of essentially walking on top of our building and raising the park, uh, making the building an extension of the park as a way to not make the island smaller and also to provide that other level of experience that yeah. uh, that was so important. You've only, you've only got 12.7 acres to work with, if I remember correctly. Isn't that it? Something like that? That's an uh, optimistic uh, measurement, I think. <laughs> that yeah. was optimistic. Okay. <laughs> and, and Doug, uh, uh, we'll come back to some of the design factors because I know there was a big uh, disability component to this. And of course, there was the design of the the uh, elements of the museum itself, but Doug, you you you, uh, you had you know particular problem in uh, just getting stuff out there uh, to to do the construction. Tell us about that. Yeah, our, our big obstacle was logistics. We are building a new museum on a small island in New York Harbor that doesn't have really any access to it. Uh, we 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 did that by actually you know securing some space in Jersey City, building our own. Uh, our own new dock out on uh, out on Liberty Island, so we could ship things to that. Um, rented barges, got uh, tugboats, and uh, did our own barging to get it out there. Um, it was a big obstacle. The other obstacle you mentioned was the size of the island. Uh, we had a very small area to work for because always the goal was to make sure the island stayed open, the visitors weren't affected by our construction. But uh, we all worked together and we got it done. You know, Stephen said, um, we, we, we want to make the experience better. Doug reinforced that uplifting. Uh, so what were some of the elements, uh, Stephen and, and Nick, uh, that uplifted, uh, that will uplift the, the uh, American visitor and the foreign visitor to, uh, to the museum? What, what are some of the, the elements that you achieved with that? Well, the primary element was uh, the building and the museum inside it, because uh, the visitors that were coming were, were deprived of, uh, of a museum experience. Mm -hmm. So that was what we 
uh, we most wanted to get done. And of course, we wanted a beautiful building that didn't compete with the Statue of Liberty. So Doug and his team, or um, Nick and his team had a challenge in figuring all that out. Right. Now, Nick, so you, the you kind of look, look. that was uh, Go ahead, Nick. iconic and refer reverential, if you will, to the to the museum. So mm -hmm. the statue. So um, we took our cue from the fort. Actually, the the fort is a kind of the base for the statue, right? And right. so we thought of this as another base for the experience. Um, we kept our building about the same height as the fort but we allowed people to get on top of our building and, um, and experience it much the way you do the fort, which I think is a, one of the experiences that people really love. Um, I, if, I I, if I remember, it's a, you've got a 14,000 square foot green roof on, on the building, is that correct? We do, we, do. we, planted, uh, we planted the roof with uh, native uh, meadow grasses. Um, and um, as soon as they started budding, we had dragonflies and all kinds of uh, things going up on that roof and butterflies, it was really beautiful. Well, I, I think uh, for me, one of the most beautiful elements uh, that you achieved is saving, uh, restoring and relocating the torch from the, uh, from the I mean, it, it's just beautiful. Uh, you call it a, uh, a uh, inspiration gallery with a glass vitrine and it's just spectacular. Tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about that and Doug, how how easy was it moving <laughs> moving a bunch of glass? <laughs> that, that, that was a challenge. That was a that moving the torch was a, a couple of years in planning. Wow! Um, to, to figure out a way how to get it out because it was at one point put in there, put into the base of the statue, and then basically closed in. Uh, yeah, and yeah. to keep the base open for visitors while we did it, but uh, but we were able to do it. We took the torch apart and we were able to maneuver it through the door and. One day in October, we moved it across the plaza and put it in its beautiful place where it is today. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, is, yeah. it, it is the symbol of liberty, right? I mean, it's yeah. the, right. If, you, if you reduce the statue to its iconic thing, it's the torch. And yeah. um, here we had this beautiful object that was uh, in the dark, if you will. And so it was, a, it was a great pleasure to be able to bring it into the daylight and have it uh, be seen by everyone and, um, and be able to see New York Harbor while you're seeing the torch. Yeah, and, well, and great at night. Yeah. That's an amazing feat. Uh, that, that was the original torch that we took down in 1984 because it, it couldn't be repaired. Mm -hmm. and as, as Nick and Doug said, it sat in the base of the statue for many years and then moving it over there was an amazing feat that took a lot of people working on it. Wow. And uh, the project achieved lead gold uh, for new construction. And uh, there's a lot of important, and this is very uh, important to us at, at our magazine, uh, disability considerations. Uh, can you talk about that? I mean, it's, you know, you obviously have many, many visitors uh, who have walking problems or whatever. Um, talk about that, please. Uh, sure. Um, well, uh, compounding that issue is the fact that we had to raise the building 10 feet above the plaza due to um, uh, resilience issues and um, right. get ourselves uh, way above the floodplain. So we basically, from the very beginning, uh, decided to uh, design a 200-foot ramp that didn't need any handrails. It was very gentle and very gradual that kind of led up to the front door. And that um, that is a seamless experience. It doesn't penalize anyone for using it. It is, it is, a, it is a really important extension of the park. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in addition to that, of course, we have elevators that go to the roof so that everybody can experience that experience as well. So, right. Uh, now, it, it, Doug, uh, you know, uh, resilience, uh, uh, Nick mentioned resilience and durability. Uh, this thing's in the middle of uh, salt water. Uh, you've got uh, huge concerns about uh, about materials and durability and 500-year uh, 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 floodplain issues, hurricane possibilities. You know, everybody remembers Sandy. So uh, that, that must have been a thought for you too as well, Doug. Yes, it, uh, you know, what... 
you know, there's a lot of obstacles in building the, the, the building out there. And, uh, you know, we had to build it on a pedestal. We had to, you know, use precast panels that, uh, that, that Nick's team designed to take the, uh, even wave loads if the, uh, mm -hmm. if the water got that high. So it was, you know, and getting all that material, getting those precast panels out to the, uh, the island was was the big obstacle. I mean, there was a day when we were when we were pouring the platform where we had a, a barge with sixteen concrete trucks on it going across the uh, New York Harbor. So <laughs> that must uh, have been a sight. It was a nerve wracking day, but it uh, but it all got done, and uh, you know we were able to pull it I off. I do want to mention um, two key partners here: ESI, which uh, did the a lot of the exhibit work, and uh, Cornell Rothschild, with it, which did the landscaping, which is. Uh, both elements are spectacular and contributed significantly uh, to this project, winning a, lead, uh, winning a gold award from our Building Team Awards. Well, uh, gentlemen, thank you so much. I've been speaking with uh, uh, Doug Phelps from Phelps Construction, Nick Garrison from FX Collaborative, and uh, Steve Briganti from the uh, Statue of Liberty Ellis Island Foundation about this wonderful and inspiring uh, Statue of Liberty Museum. Everybody should visit it. Get out there. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Robert.